The day is finally upon us. It is episode five of the Fan Showdown. It's been, well, it's been some time, a couple weeks since episode four. Uh, what have you guys been up to in the weeks prior to today? Well, um, spoiler, you guys have been up to some pretty, things are getting a little outrageous, but uh, I think that's warranted. And we got some cool stuff over here. So let's just get right into it. If you're not familiar with this series, essentially you guys out there are sending me your designs for fans that I'm going to put on this little test bench made from an A12X25 body. And uh, the goal here is to try to make a better fan or a better performing fan than an A12X25. I've been trying it. You guys have been trying it. Today's episode five. I got four more fans and let's get into seeing who is the best and if anybody is better. So the first fan we got here, this is made by Dave. This is called the F1. And the inspiration for this fan, from what he has told me, is uh, basically the rear wing of an F1 car. Now, I'm not too familiar with an F1 car. Let's take a, a look here. Yeah, I see, I see where he's going. So essentially, you got a double, uh, a double airfoil here. You got an inner ring and an outer ring. You got 15 blades. Well, essentially, you got 30, because you got 15 and then another 15 underneath it. And what I found most interesting about this, so you got this outer, outer ring and a mid ring. And if you look closely at the outer ring, you got a little bit of a lip there, somewhat like uh, the rear spoiler in an F1 car. And what is really cool about it is when you put it into the fan body, that kind of wraps around the, the frame itself. So hopefully uh, the idea there is to help guide the flow into the fan better and maybe produce better cooling. Either way, he did a pretty good job. Now, sound-wise, I won't say it's the quietest. Uh, if you watched the video from yesterday, we did some overvolting of the A12X25 and um, it got pretty loud. This one, also pretty loud at 0.3 meters. So I measured all these fans at 0.3 meters with the dB meter. This one came in at about 44.6. But when I ran the smoke test to see how the airflow was looking through this bad boy, it works. It does a good job of funneling the air into the fan, pushing it through the radiator, out the back. And from what I can tell, I suspect this is going to do a pretty decent job at cooling. Will it do better than uh, the old Noctua here? I'm not sure, but I think Dave's on the right track. Next up, now given the current launch from NVIDIA, or I guess it just launched, this one's pretty cool. This is the RTX 3080 fan. This was designed by Kevin, and obviously the inspiration for this fan was the top fan on the 3080. Now, he did say he doesn't have a 3080. I think it's pretty obvious at this point, unless you're a bot, uh, you don't own one. So this was a pretty good rendition of the 3080 fan, just looking at pictures on the old internet, and I think he executed it pretty well. The only issue I had with this fan is when I was printing it, the blades are so thin, they're literally pretty much one, one layer line thick, they're just, they're just so thin that the printer had a real rough time keeping those layers together and then pulling the support off is a little rough. But we got her to work, uh, tried to minimize the damage as much as possible. And in the end, I think he, ex he, was, uh, he did a good job hitting what he intended. Obviously, this is a nine blade design. And noise wise, it wasn't any quieter than uh, the F1 fan. It was actually louder. This one clocked in at 45.7 at 0.3 meters. Flow-wise, did a great job, again, of push, pulling the air into the fan, pushing it through the radiator. I don't see any issues with this guy being able to cool the radiator on our stress test, but it's just interesting to see how the, uh, the smoke flows through the radiator from each and every one of these fans. Next up is a fan called the Acceleron. This one's made by Thomas. It's a nine-blade fan, and uh, the inspiration for this one is, well, nothing. He said there's really no inspiration for this. He was just kind of, he just kind of threw it together. He thought the, uh, the step up of the blades looked kind of cool, right? It kind of reminds me of like Tron for some reason. But in, again, an easy print. The blades are thick, support easily detached. Um, really no, no problems printing this fan, and it's very interesting looking. Uh, Sound-wise, it was actually one of the more quiet ones. This one came in at 42.5 dBs at 3.3 millimeters, 0.3 meters. The quietest of the bunch so far. Flow-wise, it did an excellent job pulling the air into the fan, pushing it through the radiator. As you can see, no, 
no no turbulence to speak of looks pretty pretty smooth should do a pretty decent job of cooling our little 7700k and then we have we have somebody that's going by the name anonymous now i don't know why he chose to go by anonymous maybe it is anonymous i don't know either way this is what he sent me this fan he's calling the tulip it's seven blades but as you notice it's quite tall the seven blades rotate all the way up to the top and if you look in the middle there's like a little helix well i guess it's it's like uh, another seven tinier blades spiraling down in the opposite way in the middle now he said that's just for support of the main blades and to kind of help the air maybe funnel better into the center i guess but all i know is it looks sweet and he said he doesn't think this will work uh, in his point of view this was just to see how ridiculous he could possibly make a fan which i would say you succeeded on noise wise uh, other than a slight vibration of the seven blade spiral design, it wasn't super loud. Came in around 42 and a half. The coolest part was though, when I bust out the old smoke machine, if you remember when I made the, uh, oh, what was it called? Da Vinci air screw fan. It kind of threw air all over the place, but this guy did exactly as intended. The, the center seemed to help pull air into the core and, it did more pushing than it did throwing. It, it didn't throw much smoke out the sides. It was able to actually push the smoke through the radiator. And uh, being how substantial it is, I was pretty surprised. So here are your contenders. The four new fans for episode five. How do you think, how do you think they fared? Especially, especially over here. Uh, I think you're going to be surprised. So we'll start in last place of this group. We'll just talk about who did the worst. You still did better than Bryce, though. Remember that. But who did? Who got fourth place? Well, fourth place might surprise you, but it belongs to Dave and the F1 fan. Now, this actually surprised me. I thought that this one would do better, given how nice it fit within the fan blades or in the fan shroud and how well the blades came out. But it was not to be. The average temperature of the F1 fan was 80.6, giving it a delta of 60.1, putting Dave in fourth place out of these four fans. Rest in peace, Dave. I'm sorry. Your design was an A+, plus, uh, but performance-wise, we'll give you a B. Third place, then. That belongs to Kevin. Kevin's 3080 fan managed to hammer out third place, which, again, is kind of surprising. I would have thought it would do a little better than that, given how thin the blades were. Well, obviously, I thought it would do better than this one, so this is already weird to me, but Kevin's 3080 fan finished with an average temperature of 79.6, giving it a delta of 59.5, putting him in a solid third place. So now we're down to two. Two of the most unlikely ones. This one was designed based on the 3080. This one was designed based on an F1 wing. This one was just kind of thrown together based on what Thomas said. And then this one was just made to see how ridiculous he could make a fan. And here we go. They're in first and second, respectively, one way or the other. So who's in second? Well, that belongs to Anonymous. Unfortunately, it did get second. It wasn't good enough to get first, but let's just be surprised at how well it did anyway given it was really just meant to be a meme, but the anonymous fan, the Tulip, finished in a solid second place with an average temperature of 81 degrees, giving it a delta of 59.3, given the room temperature was slightly elevated. Hopefully if I ever move down to the basement, once I get it renovated, temperatures will be more consistent, but this is what we got to work with. And today the Tulip is in second place. I hope it, I mean, if it makes the board, I don't even know I'm gonna hang it on there, but either way, it's going on my Christmas tree. So that means that the Acceleron by Thomas, the fan that he said he threw together in 30 minutes, has come out victorious on this group of four. With an average temperature of 78.7, giving it a delta of 57.5. That's pretty good. That's really good. If you guys remember what the uh, Noctua was, the A12X25, that fan finished with a, a delta of 57.4. So we're talking obviously margin of error but we got to draw the line somewhere but that just puts it slightly behind the a12x25 for a fan that thomas threw together in 30 minutes i think he's just flexing on us now but that's pretty awesome so that puts this fan in a solid first place followed by mr nick carl ethan and then anonymous anonymous is going to make the board there you go one of the most unlikely fans in the world has made the board in fifth place the tulip from anonymous 
And we have a new leader, Thomas, and his 30-minute uh, Acceleron. Things are getting interesting. We're running out of colors. We're going to have to order some new uh, PLA. I think next time we'll go green. So if you have a fan idea or you think that you can do better than all these guys up here, make sure you send your designs to uh, my Thingiverse, well, not my Thingiverse, to my fan showdown at gmail.com. Check my Thingiverse account for the specifications on the fan. There's some critical dimensions you got to meet in order to use them. Until next time, peace.